Good morning, or actually afternoon, Grace Chapel family. Excellent to be here with you on Maudie Thursday, uh, for, or Holy Thursday, as many people refer to it as. Um, so if you're not familiar with the terminology, I figured we would just start briefly uh, just discussing what the terminology means, why we're using that particular terminology. Um, and uh, that way you don't are not confused uh, maybe by some of the things that might be said. Um, Maudi Thursday, specifically, as uh, I have a resource in front of me that's detailing it, it's the Thursday before Easter in celebration of the uh, original observance of the Lord's Supper. Um, specifically, it's known as uh, also as Holy Thursday. It's rooted in the biblical accounts of Jesus' celebration of the Passover meal, the institution of the Eucharist or communion with his disciples, and are traced back all the way through Christian liturgy, ultimately all the way back to some of the first writings that we have from the early church fathers, including Justin Martyr. Um, so originally it was associated with the preparation for baptism that would occur every Easter Sunday morning. Um, and uh, a lot of churches throughout the church history has had baptisms on Easter and that this was a day of preparation uh, specifically for those baptisms. And so, um, this specifically, Maudi Thursday, comes from the Latin word medatum, uh, which basically is the word commandment. Uh, and it's coming from ultimately John 13, 34, which we will get to shortly. Um, but it continues to be celebrated, as Dr. Larry Gregg has mentioned, in many Christian communities as a time of penance, preparation, and consecration in the midst of the Holy Week. And so this is a time where we reflect on what is occurring and really give ourselves some space to be reflecting on what we're going to be talking about tomorrow with Good Friday, uh, Saturday, a silent day, and then Sunday on Easter Sunday. So that's specifically the purpose of uh, Maudie Thursday. Um, starting off with uh, a reading from Matthew, we're going to read first Matthew, just three verses. Uh, now, on the first day of the unleavened bread, that is the Passover, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where will you have us prepare for you to eat Passover? And he said, go into the city and a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus has directed them and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he reclined at the table with the 12. This specifically is where we see this Passover celebration begin. So most of the day on Thursday, we have no record of what occurs in the day on Thursday, other than the fact that there was on this first day, by all gospel accounts, there's a time of preparation for the Passover meal. The next account that I want to take a look at is in John chapter 13, uh, and this is directly before uh, this celebration will begin. Uh, John records specifically in his Gospels a story of something that occurs uh, that's pretty significant. Uh, and so uh, I want to take a look at this story. Now, before the Feast of the Passover, again, that's Maundy Thursday, this day, Thursday, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of the world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During the supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing all that the Father had given him all things into his hand, that he had come from God and was going back to God, he rose from supper, he lay aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured out the water into a basin and began washing the disciples' feet, and to wipe them from the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. And Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I do not wash your feet, you will have no share with me. And Simon Peter said, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, The one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you were clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray you, and that is why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If then I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you who do them. I am not speaking to all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate his bread lifted his heel against me. I am telling you now that this place before it takes place, so that when it does, you may believe that I am he. 
Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me. Whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Now, this picture is striking because as the disciples are gathering together for this meal, there is this conversation about betrayal that's going to occur. And we're going to talk about the betrayal being revealed shortly. And, but before there's this, this conversation of betrayal, they're all sitting around the Passover meal and someone needs to get up and wash the feet of all of the participants around the table. And the hard part is, is that no one is doing it. Um, and this is an important thing. To wash the feet of someone was only a responsibility of a slave or a lower class citizen in the Greco-Roman era. Uh, even the Jews recognized that if you were going to be someone who was washing the feet, you'd be washing off the grind, the filth, uh, the filth and the dirt, and sometimes the dung of the feet of the people who are going to be sitting at a meal. And so it would be important for you to, to wash that off, but it was a disgusting task. And so it was only done. In fact, D.A. Carson himself notes that no source in the Greco-Roman era world would ever detail an instance where a superior would ever wash the feet of an inferior. Now, we have a situation here where the disciples are all sitting around the table and somebody needs to wash the feet because they, they don't have tables like us. They're not sitting in tables and chairs like it's commonly pictured. They're all sitting on the floor. And so your feet are close to your meal and it's disgusting. And so they would they would wash the feet. But Everyone's waiting to see who's going to take that servant's position. Who's, who's going to serve the others? And to the complete shock of all the disciples, Jesus gets up and he washes their feet. Rightly, de Peter demonstrates a refusal where he says, Lord, do not wash. You are not washing my feet. Uh, this is not Peter uh, somehow not wanting Jesus to do something for him. It is, it is recognizing the Lord I am not taking a position above you. I am not uh, over you in any way. And he's the only one that has the, the like recovery to respond because everyone else is just shocked. And they should be because what's happening is not normal. It is a demonstration of Christ's love. And that's why I love how John puts in the beginning of this section, he says, with the love that he loved them, he loved them to the end. And he says specifically that in verse 1. Uh, that having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Uh, and this is a demonstration of that love. He, he takes the outer garments off. He takes the towel. He ties it around his waist. And he pours water into a basin. He washes those disciples' feet, including Judas Iscariot. And he says, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will. You will understand it. And so he, he demonstrates to them, he says, do you not understand what I have done? Well, now you're, he's going to tell them. He says, I'm teacher and Lord, but I have washed your feet. So you wash one another's feet. Now, we, some people take that as an ordinance that we should continue. And, and oftentimes on Monday, Thursday, we do, we do have practices of washing each other's feet in demonstration of that. However, however, there is this element here of which there is a service, and Jesus is saying, serve one another selflessly. Don't mind taking on the position of the slave for each other, because no one is greater than their master. And if the master has done this, this is what you should do. And so there is this element to which Jesus is shown by his actions and his behavior. You are to live in this way. And then we see that the betrayal is revealed. And this is specifically where after this, this, this beautiful event of Jesus demonstrating his, his self-sacrificial to the disciples in this way. And they've always felt loved by Jesus throughout his entire ministry, but now so much more in a unique, demonstrable way. But now he's sitting at the table and he says to them, truly, truly, in, in John chapter 13, verse 21, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And the disciples looked at one another, uncertain of, of whom he spoke. And one of his disciples whom Jesus loved, probably John, was reclining at the table of Jesus' side. And Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So the disciple leaned back against Jesus and said, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, it is he to whom I give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. Now, Jesus probably didn't say that out loud. He, he, he's, he's, John is leaning back against him and Jesus is conversating with him in a, in a quiet manner. And so he takes this morsel, he dips it in the bread, and this is the matzah, and he gives it to 
son, to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. And this is, you get one of these in the Passover. It's symbolic. And it's given to the person the highest honor at the table. And Jesus takes what is to be given to the person who is to have the highest honor. Instead of taking it for himself as he should, he instead takes it and he gives it to Judas, the one who will betray him. That in his betrayal, Jesus demonstrates that even though he knows Judas is going to betray him, he treats him with the highest honor and the highest respect and the greatest love. That is why specifically it says in the passage that then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into, into him. And Jesus said to him, what you were going to do, do quickly. And now this is why verse 28 says, and no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Had they have heard what Jesus said in verse 26, they would have they would have known. But Verse 29, some of them thought because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling them, buy what we need for the feast or that he should give something to the poor. And so after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out and it was night. And John makes that note specifically that there's darkness that has covered the land and that it is dark and there is darkness in Judas and there is darkness in this group. The betrayal had been revealed. Well, what's so impressive and so amazing to me is that Jesus, in directly after these things, he, he begins talking to the disciples, and, and he says, verse 34, he says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, for you have had love one for another. This new commandment, this is what is meant by commandment of Mahdi. Maudi Thursday, commandment, Latin, right? The idea being that this new commandment I have given to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Now, the previous commandment was to love one another uh, as you desired to be loved. That was the commandment, right? Love a neighbor as oneself. But Jesus has changed the commandment, not nullifying it, but making it stronger as he did with all of the commandments in Matthew chapter 5 through 7. He says, not only should you love one another as you desire to be loved, but love like I've loved you. And in that way, love each other. Now, he has already demonstrated that through his entire ministry to these disciples, his love for them, and they've seen it. They've been firsthand watched how Christ has loved them. And But tonight, they've now seen a more beautiful picture in his sacrificial servant heart in loving them by washing their feet and taking the form of a servant. And then, as they come to realize what Jesus did with Judas, that they, Jesus tr treated Judas with the highest of honor, and, and, and highest of love, even though he knew that Judas was going to betray him, a close friend who ministered with him for three years. And in this, he's going to show even more love because the very next day, Christ is going to endure an intense uh, suffering and wrath of God upon him for the sins of every single one of those men. And he is saying, love while I have loved both now and in the past, I'm going to love you tomorrow. That is the love that you are to love one another with. And that is why Maudie Thursday is a time of reflection on how have I loved? How have I loved in the way that Jesus has loved? And preparing ourselves and our hearts for, for the message of Good Friday and to hear it anew and afresh so that we can be reminded of the love that Christ has, that he has borne the penalty of our sin upon the cross and I'm excited tomorrow to be able to spend some time with you in discussing that. Tomorrow morning, uh, we're going to look at specifically the uh, arrest of Jesus, the betrayal of Jesus, which occurs Thursday night. We'll look at that uh, tomorrow during the day. Uh, and then in the evening, we're going to be talking about Christ's sacrifice and what that means specifically out of Hebrews chapter 10. So, um, I, anyways, as you're going about today, be thinking about Maudi Thursday. Be thinking about what does it mean to love others as Christ has loved you and that self-sacrificial nature to which Christ has demonstrated both in his actions here uh, tonight, Maudi Thursday, where he's taking on the servant role for his disciples, loving them and caring them, even Judas who is, betrayed, who is to betray him, and even more so at the cross. And how do we demonstrate that love to others? Because by that love, all people will know that we are his disciples. 
That's what we've got for Maudie Thursday. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and look forward to reading with you some more tomorrow. God bless.